Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you're looking for some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. First up, I tried a new recipe for Crock-Pot Cheddar Chili Mac. This recipe, as well as all of the recipes from today's video, will be linked down in my description box below for you. So first up, I've got the Crock-Pot. I'm going to add in some beef broth. I am using some beef bouillon powder with water. Next, we're going to add in a can of chili beans, and I did have the recipe, by the way. And I'm using mild chili beans, but you could do hot here, and you do not want to drain the beans. Leave that liquid on there. Next, we're going to add in a can of Rotel, or I'm using the Walmart version. And again, you can use whatever heat you prefer on this, and you do want to drain the Rotel. So once I've added that, I'm going to add in my meat. The recipe called for ground beef, which you could totally use. I decided to use some ground turkey, though, so I just cooked that with a little salt and pepper until it was done. Next, we're going to add in the seasonings. The recipe called for garlic salt and chili powder. I'm going to add the chili powder. I prefer not to use garlic salt, just a personal preference. So I'm adding garlic powder. And then I decided to also add in some cumin, minced onion, and minced garlic. This is just what I tend to add when I'm making homemade chili. Use whatever seasonings you like. You could also, um, you know, cook up some bell peppers, onion, jalapeno peppers, whatever you prefer. So once I've added some salt and pepper, I'm going to give that a good stir, cover this with a lid, and the recipe says to cook this on high for two hours or low for an hour, hour and a half, which you can totally do, but this is basically, well, not basically, it is chili, so you can cook it as low and slow as you want. It's something you could, you know, put in the crock pot before you go to work, and it would be great by the time you get home because chili just gets better the longer it cooks. So at this stage, I gave it a stir, and then I'm going to add in my cooked pasta, Usually you would use macaroni noodles for this. I had some cavatappi on hand, so I'm going to use that. I just cooked it according to the package instructions and drained it. I'm also going to add in some shredded cheddar cheese, give that a stir, and then I'm going to cover this with a lid, and I just cooked this on low for about 15 minutes or so. At this point, this is what the chili mac looked like. So I gave it another stir and then I'm gonna add a little extra cheddar cheese on top. I covered it with a lid. I turned it off at this point and I just allowed it to sit kind of while I made our plates to allow the cheese to melt. This is what it looked like when it was done. So to go along with this, I am making some jalapeno cheddar jiffy cornbread. And again, the recipe will link down below. I have the recipe. In this bowl, I'm going to add a package of Jiffy Mix, and I apologize, I forgot to show it to you, but I just used the, the plain Jiffy Mix. I'm going to add in some shredded cheddar cheese and then buttermilk. If you don't have any buttermilk on hand, no worries, just use plain milk, or you can also add some plain milk with a little bit of vinegar. I'm going to add in an egg. Next, I'm going to add in my jalapeno. So I just did a small jalapeno. I removed the seeds and membrane and chopped it pretty finely. You can add as much or as little jalapeno as you like here, depending on how spicy you like things. Um, you could also do pickled jalapenos. I think that would be good. So I'm going to give that a mix, and I'm careful not to overmix that. Now, I found this cute little, like, skull Halloween um, muffin tin at the Dollar Tree. And so I decided to use it tonight. I sprayed it really, really, really well with some baking spray uh, because it's not the best quality and I wanted to make sure these did not stick. So I'm going to fill those and then place this into a preheated oven and I just baked it according to the package instructions. Now here I have just some softened butter and honey. I thought the honey butter would be really yummy with the cheddar jalapeno bread and once the cornbread muffins come out of the oven, I'm going to brush it with some of that honey butter. Here are the muffins out of the oven, and I was pleasantly surprised. They did not stick nearly as bad as I thought they would. However, I did way overfill the little tins, so the tops kind of lost their skull shape. And yes, I could have peeled off that extra cornbread, but I wasn't really worried about because it, it was just Gary and I. But I flipped them over and brushed the tops with that honey butter that I made. Here are the plates. So we've got some of the chili mac. I added some sour cream and green onions. And then we had that cheddar jalapeno honey butter cornbread. The cornbread was so, so good. Highly recommend you give that a try. And the chili mac, we really enjoyed it. I um, mean, you know, it was 
comforting. It was budget friendly. I will say, however, though, I have a different chili mac recipe that I've made in the past that's not a crock pot version that I slightly prefer over this one, but I think it's because of the noodles. I felt like because I just added the noodles at the very end, they didn't absorb that chili flavor, um, you know, as much as it would if I would have added it earlier in the cooking process or if I had done the like one pot version which is what I normally make where you cook the chili and the noodles together I hope that makes sense like it wasn't I'm not saying it was bad and we didn't like it we liked it and we enjoyed it I just prefer the chili flavor to cook a little more into the noodles again hopefully that makes sense <laughs> but if you're looking for a comforting budget-friendly crock pot meal I recommend you give this a try it was really good For dinner the next night, we actually had leftovers from our lunch that day. And I apologize, I didn't get pictures like I normally would of this um, because I was planning on you know, sticking to the meal plan and eating what I planned for dinner and not lunch leftovers. Um, but there is a lady local to us who makes homemade tamales and pupusas. And so we had ordered from her. We got half dozen of the pork with green sauce tamales and she threw in, what was it? It was red sauce and it had like bell peppers and tomatoes, which I've never had before, but it was really good. And then we got some of their cheese pupusas and, um, you know, it's so filling and so, so incredibly delicious, but we had tamales and pupusas left over from lunch. So that's what we had for dinner that night. For dinner the next night, I made baked drumsticks. Now, the seasoning that I used for this is from an all recipes recipe for a rotisserie chicken. And I've made this for years and years, but it has been a while since I made it. Um, but like I said, I do it on like chicken thighs or chicken drumsticks instead of a rotisserie chicken. But it's just a great seasoning blend to use on any kind of chicken. So here are the ingredients I'm going to use. And of course, the recipe will be linked down below for the exact measurements. And note to future self and to you, um, this was borderline just right on the edge of being too salty. I forgot. I normally cut back the salt on this, um, but I just, I, like I said, I haven't made it for a while and I forgot, but I recommend cutting back the salt just a little bit on this. I've got ground black pepper, ground white pepper, paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, cayenne pepper, thyme, and salt. I mix up all the spices in a small bowl. I've added some chicken drumsticks to a Ziploc bag. And like I said, you can use chicken thighs, chicken breast. You can do a whole chicken on this. And then I'm going to add some olive oil. So I just added the seasonings, the oil, and the chicken to the Ziploc bag. Gave it a little zhuzh. And then you can refrigerate this and marinate it if you prefer. But I just let it sit while the oven was preheating. For one of the sides, I tried a new recipe for brown sugar and bacon roasted sweet potatoes. And yes, these were as good as they sound. So good. I've got the oven preheating to 350 degrees. In this bowl, I'm going to add some sweet potato cubes. I just washed sweet potatoes and peeled them and then cubed them. I'm then going to drizzle some olive oil over that and give it a stir followed by the brown sugar. Now the recipe didn't call for any seasonings at all other than the brown sugar. I think the recipe was um, relying on the bacon to provide the saltiness and the other seasonings, but you know, n every single piece of sweet potato wasn't like entirely wrapped by bacon. So I felt like I needed to add a little bit of seasoning and I'm glad that I did. I added some of the Kinder's brown sugar garlic and just a little pinch of salt. So if you're going to make these, which I highly recommend, these were delicious. I would at least add just a a little pinch of salt because remember salt is a flavor enhancer so once i've added the brown sugar to the sweet potatoes i'm adding in some chopped bacon give that a stir and then place this onto a baking sheet i highly highly recommend you line your baking sheet with aluminum foil to make it easy to clean up with the brown sugar and the sugar from the sweet potatoes and the bacon fat trust me just line it with with some foil i laid the sweet potatoes out i placed them into the preheated oven and baked these for about 35 minutes or so you just want to bake them until the sweet potatoes are tender and your bacon is rendered for the other side super simple i've got the steam in a bag green beans i'm going to cook them according to the package instructions and then place them into a skillet with some of this garlic and herb butter and just cook them on like medium heat for a couple minutes 
Here is the finished chicken. So all I did was place the chicken drumsticks onto a foil lined baking dish. I baked these at 425 degrees for about 30 minutes and then I dropped the heat down to 350 and put the sweet potatoes in and then just baked the chicken with the sweet potatoes. And then we've got those sweet potatoes, the green beans. Here are the plates. So we have one of the leftover cheddar jalapeno um, corn muffins. And so I served that to Gary and this was so yummy. That rub on the chicken is delicious. Those sweet potatoes, I mean, you can't go wrong with sweet potatoes, brown sugar and bacon. And then the green beans are simple, but tasty. Dinner the next night was off a meal plan, but I woke up that morning and was just craving this. So I was like, I'm going to make my creamy Italian chicken and rice. Now I have shared this a few times before my channel, but it's been a while and I've had new subscribers since then. So I wanted to share it. This is absolutely a family favorite. Now, um, there's different ways to do this. I've seen lots of different recipes, but let me just show you how I like to make it. I'm going to add a splash of chicken broth to the bottom of the crock pot. You don't have to do that, but I like to when I'm using fresh chicken. Uh, it just gives it a little moisture. I'm going to add in some chicken breast. I happen to have these thin sliced today, so I'm going to use that. You can use regular chicken breast. I've done this with chicken tenders, and you can also use frozen chicken. You don't have to thaw it. You can just pop it straight into the crock pot frozen. If you're going to do that, though, I wouldn't add any chicken broth at this point. We're gonna add some dry Italian dressing mix and sprinkle that over the chicken. Now here's where I said I've seen different recipes for this. Instead of doing the chicken broth and the dry Italian dressing mix, I've seen, and you've probably seen it on Instagram and TikTok, where people will use like the Olive Garden bottled Italian dressing. Use whatever you've got on hand or what your preference is. So next I'm gonna add in a can of cream of chicken soup. If you don't like cream of chicken, use whatever cream of soup you do like. Now at this point, used to, I would cook this until the chicken was done and then add in the cream cheese. I've now started just adding in the cream cheese at this point. It turns out the same. Um, and then I'm going to cover this with a lid. You can cook this on low for six to eight hours or on high for three to four hours. You just want to cook it until the chicken is at least 165 degrees internal temperature and the chicken is really nice and tender. So at this point, this is what it looked like. I like to remove the chicken breasts and dice them. I know a lot of people just will shred the chicken and you can totally do that. It's just a preference thing. Um, you know, if you want to make it quicker and easier, you can just take a little food chopper and, uh, you know, chop up the chicken and leave it still in the crock pot. But give it a taste, adjust the seasonings to your taste. You can add a little salt, little pepper, garlic powder, whatever you like. And then you can serve this over pasta, mashed potatoes. We love it over just plain white rice. I didn't do any side dishes this evening evening. Um, this is super, super filling. And to be honest, I just wasn't in the mood <laughs> for a side dish. We all have those nights where we just aren't feeling it. And I just wanted the creamy Italian chicken and rice. And that's what I had. Delicious. So, so good. The next day was another day off in meal plan, but that's all right. So on this day, Gary and I had done a lunch date. We went to a small town south of Nashville called Nolensville, Tennessee. And there is an apple orchard there. And you can go there and buy like apple cider and jams and all kinds of yummy, delicious things. So we went there. And then there's also a, I call it the fruit stand, but it's a, uh, what do they call it? Like a nursery greenhouse where they sell all kinds of plants and things like that. They also have a fruit stand where they bring in produce from the Amish really close to where I'm from. So it's like getting produce from home. And then they have an Amish market there. So we kind of hit up all those places, stopped at the um, orchard, got some yummy apple cider. I got a fresh tomato from the produce stand. And then i would really been craving a bologna sandwich. So I got just some plain white bread from the Amish. It was so soft. We got some thick cut bologna. And so that night for dinner, we just had bologna sandwiches. Uh, kept it super simple and had some Doritos with it. And that was our dinner this night. Totally hit the spot. Dinner the next night was our dinner out night. So on this particular day, Gary wasn't feeling well. He's fine. It just was his allergies acting up. Um, and so he'd taken a late afternoon nap. I was trying to think of something that I could order that, you know, would be okay warmed up whenever he woke up and decided to eat. And we haven't had barbecue in a while. And so I just ordered takeout from a barbecue place. I got there. Y'all, this is the half 
loaded baked potato. This is half. <laughs> they have a larger one. This is a pulled pork loaded baked potato. That's what I had. And then I got Gary their pulled pork barbecue sandwich with some potato salad and coleslaw. And my potato was delicious. I decided to add some of this Hidden Valley Ranch Smokehouse um, on top of the potato. It was so good. And then when Gary woke up, uh, he just warmed up his pulled pork and had that. And that was our dinner this night. For the last dinner in this week's video, we just did a yo-yo night or you're on your own. Some people call this everybody fin for themselves. Gary still wasn't feeling well. Again, he's fine. Just his allergies were acting up and I was having a flare up and didn't really want to cook for, you know, just myself. So I was digging around to see what I could come up with. We had one single hamburger bun left that needed to be used up. And then we had a couple chicken patties. These are just the Tyson frozen ones. So I cooked the um, chicken patty in the air fryer and then I also had made some Ruby Tuesday pasta salad this week um, just you know to keep on hand for quick lunches or nights like this where I don't feel like cooking. I've shared this several times before on my channel. I'll link that video down in the description box below if you'd like to see how I made it and that was my dinner just chicken patty sandwich and some pasta salad and um, Gary had had a late lunch and a big lunch so he wasn't hungry for dinner this night. All right, that is it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video and got some new dinner ideas. If you did like it, hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.